Hello everyone and welcome to this very special video. So, you want to learn Maya? I am gonna show you how to use Maya in 40 minutes or less. I'm gonna try to guide you through the whole process I'm creating this bomb right here. We're gonna go through the basic things such as the interface, the main tools, how to create primitives, and I'm gonna show you how to get all the way to this point. Now, Keep in mind, we're gonna be a little bit, this, like, we're gonna kinda speed run this thing, so there might be some concepts that might be a little bit too fast for you. Don't worry, just pause the video, go over them, and if you need more help, we have premium courses where we offer all of this knowledge at a really, really affordable price, and you can check down them down here with uh, Udemy as well. This today is the final day of this very amazing bundle. Hello everyone, and welcome to this special announcement. Spring Break is almost here and we want to celebrate by offering an amazing discount for all of our courses. All of them. From March 20 to March 24, you guys will be able to get all of our courses, any of them, with a very special discount. For the next few days, we're offering a massive 90% discount on all of our courses on Udemy. Whether you're a beginner, just starting your 3D journey, or an advanced student looking to take your skills to the next level, we have the perfect course for you. Do you want to learn Maya? We have it. Do you want to learn ZBrush? Here we go. Do you want to learn Substance Painter, 3D Code, Houdini, Blender? We got them all. We have over 60 courses available for you right now. All courses include the files, the resources, and we have a dedicated Q&A to answer all of your questions. So, what are you waiting for? Head over to Udemy now and take advantage of this amazing offer. Don't miss your chance to start your 3D journey and become a great artist in no time. So there you go, guys. If after you watch this video and you create your own bomb, you are ready to jump into the 3D world, we have all of these courses available. That's it. Let's go. Very well, guys. So let's jump right into Maya. This is the first time you're probably seeing the Maya interface or one of the first times. And I'm going to guide you through the basics of the movement and how to like manipulate the whole things or the things here instead of Maya, and then we're gonna go into our exercise. So uh, the Maya interface is compromised by the menus, the shortcuts, the shelves, which is all of these parts right here, our outliner, which might or might not be activated in your computer, which is uh, the collection of all of the things that we have inside of our scene. Right now we have nothing but the default cameras, the basic movement and selection tools, the basic viewport layouts over here, and on this side, you're either going to see the channel box, which is empty right now, or the attribute editor, any of these two things right here, which are common places where we find information about our objects inside of Maya. This thing right here is called the viewport, and we're using something called the viewport 2.0, which allows us to see lights and shadows and a lot of really cool stuff that we're going to be seeing later. And uh, to move inside of the viewport, we're going to be using Alt, the, the like key Alt, and then click, Alt and click will rotate the viewport around. Alt and middle mouse will move the viewport around and Alt and right click will zoom in and out. You're, we're actually not moving the viewport, we're moving the camera that's in the viewport, um, but it looks like we're moving the floor right here. So those three clicks you're gonna have to master, they're, they're the basic things that we're gonna be using here instead of Maya to move our scene around. And uh, once we have that, we can actually jump into the 3D shapes. So if we go up here to the shelf, you're gonna find this one called the poly modeling shelf. And here inside the poly modeling uh, shelf, we have like sphere, a cube, any of this ones. If you click any of them, you're gonna create a, that shape here inside of the 3D world. By the way, if you get lost, like if you don't know where things are, just press F. F will frame things back into, uh, into the world and you're gonna be able to see where things are. Now, being a 3D world, we actually have axis, right? Like front, side, and top and bottom. By default, you can see the little gizmo down here. Or actually, you can't because my picture is covering it. There we go. So right here, you are going to be able to see a little gizmo. Y should be pointing up, okay? So Y points up, X points forward, and C points left and right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad. Oh my God, what am I teaching you guys? Y points up, C points forward, and X is left and right. There we go. Now, several softwares such as um, like Blender, Unreal Engine, they will switch things around. So it's very important that you know which axis you're working with uh, depending on the software you're using. So now that we have this thing right here, how do we move this? How do we manipulate this object? Well, if you're a MOBA player, if you play League of Legends, this is gonna be very easy because the shortcuts are Q, W, E, and R. Let me turn on the little software that we use for the keystrokes. There we go. So now you should see the shortcuts on the little corner right there on your screen. So Q is selection mode, W is movement mode, E is rotation mode, and R is scale mode. 
I would personally would have changed the E and the R. It makes a little bit more sense, but hey, that's how it is. So if we go to W, you're going to see three arrows, which represent the three axes that we have here inside of the 3D world. So we have the Y axis, we have the X axis, and we have the Z axis. And if you click on any of the arrows and move them to the different parts, you're going to be moving the object to a different position on this 3D world. So let's say I push this up, you're going to see here on the channel box, if you don't have it enabled, make sure to click this on the side, the channel box, that this sphere is five units up from the origin of the world. This point right here, the 000, is called the origin of the world. And right now we have pushed this element uh, five units up. If we then press, for instance, let's delete this one, let's go for a cube that's easier to see. If I press E now and I go into rotation, you're going to see that we have this rings, which represent the axis in which we're going to be rotating. If we rotate on the Y axis, it's kind of like a ballerina or like a top, uh, just like spinning around the different things. If we rotate on the C axis, it's like a plane rotating from left to right. And if we rotate on the X axis, it's kind of like doing a front flip, right? So by rotating these things, we can also see on the translations over here how they are changing depending on where the object is. If at any point you rotate really crazily, you move really crazily, you even scale really crazily in different elements and you want to go back to the original shape, you can zero out the rotations and translations, just write zero, and you can set the scale to one. Very important that you set the scale to one because otherwise the object disappears. If you have an object with zero scale, it has no volume, therefore it's not existent. Well, it exists, but it exists without the volume. So uh, yeah, those are the basic things. W for movement, E for rotation, and R for scale. Those are the things that you're going to be using the most when working here inside of Maya. Now we're going to jump into, uh, or we're going to talk about very quickly about some cameras because we're going to be using these cameras. And we have the perspective camera, which is this one right here. And if you press, if you press a space bar, you're going to jump into what we call the orthographic views. The top view, the front view, the side view, and again, the perspective view. You can uh, hover your mouse over any of these windows, and if you press the spacebar again, you're going to jump into this camera. And you're going to know which camera it is because it's going to tell you down here depending on which one you have selected. So again, perspective camera, side camera, front camera. And we're going to be able to well, modify and, and uh, change things around by using this uh, different cameras right here. We go over all of this in way more detail in our like advanced courses. I'll, I'll talk this about uh, a little bit about this at the end of the video. Uh, but uh, yeah, these are like the basic, basic things. If at any point something happens with your cameras, you can't find them. You can press this one right here. This is the perspective. This is, again, the orthographic view. This is the double view. And you can just press any of these layouts right here to jump straight into any of the like preset elements. You can also go here to workspace. As you can see, we're in workspace general right now. And you can just say reset current workspace if something's like not working or you, you can't find something on the on the UI. Now that we have this, uh, we can start well working on our little project. And uh, since the Mario movie is coming very, very soon, I figured out it would be a nice idea to do a bomb. There we go. So a bomb is a relatively simple element. I think if you're just starting your 3D career, this is a perfect exercise to, to try to replicate. And we're going to do our best to copy this bomb right here. So I'm going to right click this object. And I'm going to save this image. Usually when we're working inside of Maya, we keep orders using something called a project file and, and like folders and stuff. I'm going to keep it really simple for you because I want you guys to be able to do this project. And I'm just going to save this. Uh, oh, it's a wee bad. Oh, I hate this. I'm just going to use my snipping tool here. I'm just going to snip this. There we go. Because I don't think Maya works nicely with uh, with WebMP elements. And we're going to save this. And you can save this on your documents or wherever you want. I'm going to save it on the desktop for now just to, to have a quick access to it. But ideally, there are folders and subfolders that we work with. So now that we have that, I am going to go to my side view. So I'm going to press the space bar and then hover my mouse over the side view and press the space bar again. And then what I want to do is I want to bring that image here inside of Maya so that we can use it as a reference and uh, try to replicate all of the shapes as nicely as possible. So I'm going to say view on the viewport menus right here. And I'm going to say image plane, import image. And if we go to the desktop, we're going to find the bomb here and we can open it. And there we go. Now, the problem with this image, you can move it and scale it around. It's pretty much like an object, like a sphere or a cube. So I'm going to move it and scale it up a little bit. But the problem is, as you can see, it's facing backwards. The C is always fo pointing uh, forward. And this one is facing backwards. I'm going to press R to scale it. And I'm going to scale it to minus 
which is the the uh, size that we have on the other elements and that way the image is facing forward and there we go we got our nice little bob bomb right there and uh, we can push this image back so we have free space here on our grid and we can start working on the very very simple shapes that are going to be making this character right here so let's start with the most like basic one, the body, right? The body of the bomb is just a sphere. So I'm just gonna create a sphere and the only thing I need to do is press W to move it up and then R to scale it up and create this nice little like silhouette right there. We can even get it out of the of the center. I'm actually gonna model this post. So I'm gonna try to ma match the concept as close as possible. This is not something that we normally do. There's a whole like different thing about rigging and, and preparing your characters. But since this is just a quick render that we wanna do, we're gonna be doing uh, this uh, like post. So that's it. That's the body of the bomb. And we're sure that this is where we wanna keep this sphere. So this is an important thing. As you can see, this sphere has information translation information and scale information. If I were to send this file to someone else and they see this information, they might want to zero it out to keep the image or the scene clean. And if we don't wanna lose this current like situation that we well, that we have right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this little button up here, again on the poly modeling tab that says freeze transformation. It will zero out these new transformations of our object. And now this is where we're gonna find our elements, okay? So there we go, our sphere is red. If we wanna see what's behind the sphere, we can press the number four on our keyboard. And by doing that, we're gonna be entering into this thing called the wireframe mode, which allows us to, well, see transparently and appreciate where other elements are. So now we're gonna create the base for this sort of like a, f a flicker, I think it's called the flicker or the little candle thing. So I'm gonna create a cylinder now. I'm gonna move the cylinder up. I'm gonna press R to scale it make it a little bit bigger, roughly about there. I'm gonna scale it down with a little cube to make it flatter. And if we position it with rotation and everything, we should be able to position it right around there. And there we go. As you can see, this little cylinder is gonna live right there. But one thing I'm seeing is that the cylinder has a rounded corners. Well, here's where we're gonna start increasing the, the level of things. Every single object that we create is made out of something called components. The components are the vertices, the faces and the edges that make up this three-dimensional object. And the powerful thing about Maya is that we can access those components and modify them to create, well, more interesting elements. So for instance, at this cylinder right here, if I want to round off the edges, like what we have here on the reference, I would need to go into the edge components, which is this edge right here, and this edge, this edge right here, and use a tool, which is this one, which is called the bevel tool. I'm going to right click on top of the little cylinder. I'm going to select edge, and then I'm gonna drop the click. Again, right click, select edge, and then you can see the shape changes. Now it's no longer green because no longer we're no longer in object mode, we're in component mode. And the specific component that we're in is the edges. Now we can select these edges and if we wanna select the whole edge ring, we can just double click. So double click and that will select the whole edge ring. And once we've done that, we can actually start editing this component and modifying it to create something more complex. That's the whole basis of the 3D world creating complexity out of simplicity. We start with basic shapes and then we edit and modify those basic shapes until we get what we want. So in this particular case, with this edge right here, I'm gonna click this bevel tool, which works very well with edges. And when I do this, you're gonna see, boom, that we get a bevel. We remove some of the volume and we create a little bit more curvature. But this is too much, right? This is way too much curvature. So how can we fix this? Very easy, we're gonna get this little box right here. You should get this little box. And if you don't get it on the channel box down here, you will get something called the inputs. And you can see we have the poly bevel input. And what I can do is I can modify the fraction here and make it a little bit smaller, something like that, like a 0.1 seems good. We can also add more segments if we want this to be rounder. So I'm gonna add two segments and that's it. Now I'm gonna do the same thing down here. So I'm gonna select that edge loop right there. I'm gonna bevel it, make the fraction really small as well and give it two segments. And there we go. Now, if we want to go back to object mode, we just right click on top of the object, select object mode again, and with that done, we're now ready to continue working. So this one, we can press W again, and just push it down so that it's sitting right on top of our circle. Look at that. Very nice, right? Now, there's a very important thing. When we created the sphere and we positioned it properly where we wanted, I told you guys that it was important to freeze the transformations so that now, Everything is clean, and if someone opens our scene, they won't be able to modify this, or if they modify them, we can go back to this original state. 
But there's one important thing. You can see this object right here has something called inputs. And all of these inputs are the things that we did to the object to get it here. So we created the cylinder, we did two bevels, and then we transformed the geometry to position it right here. If we want to keep our scenes clean, we also need to delete this history because otherwise we, we get objects with a lot of history that could potentially crash the software. So when we are sure that we're not gonna be modifying anything on the inputs, we can go to this buttons again and use this one right here, which says delete by type history. And what that will do, as the name implies, it will delete the history and your object will now be clean. And there we go. We get a really clean object right here and we're able to continue to the next shape. If I'm going a little bit fast, don't worry. Just pause the video, do the like simple shapes that we're doing, and then continue. This video is not going anywhere. It's going to be available here for you um, all the time. And of course, if you want to delve deeper, we got the introduction to Maya 2023 available through Udemy. So uh, continuing now with this, like uh, I think it's, I think the proper name is the the flicker. Is we need a cylinder, right? We need another cylinder. So I'm going to go again to my side view. And you can see, uh oh, we lost the side view. What happened here? Well, I might have used some of the shortcuts that I normally use accidentally. If that happens, don't worry. Just click here, and there we go. Our side view is back here. And I'm going to create a cylinder. I'm going to press W and move it around. And let's say I lost the cylinder. It's like, oh, it's inside the sphere. How can I select it? Don't worry. Press number four, select the cylinder right there. Press number five again, and you can get it out. I'm going to scale it, and I'm going to make it longer. Now, one thing that you might notice is that this little thing right here, actually, I, I think it's not flicker, it's weak. I think the word is weak, candle weak. So this thing right here has a little bit of curvature. How can we create that curvature? Well, remember the inputs that I talked about, like any modification that we do to an object? Here's the thing that we can do. When any object is born, such as this cylinder right here, it is born with a specific amount of uh, inputs. So if we go here to the inputs, you're gonna see that this thing is a cylinder with radius one, height two, and 20 subdivisions, which is 20 divisions along its circumference. And another thing is you can see we have the subdivision height with only one, meaning there's only one face between both caps. If we wanna curve this, we're gonna need more divisions so that we can move those divisions and create a little bit more of a curvature. So I'm gonna go here to subdivision height and I'm gonna say, give me five subdivisions. And there we go. As you can see, we now have more divisions and the more components you have, the more control you're gonna have over your a specific element. So we're gonna press the spacebar again, go to the side view. I'm gonna make this smaller, but I'm gonna make it taller, small and tall like this. We're gonna position it right here on the center. And then we're gonna go to the components again, but we're not gonna go to edges now. We're gonna go to vertex. I'm gonna right click on the object and instead of going to the edges right here, I'm gonna go to the vertex. The vertex are the singular most important unit of any like polygonal object because everything originates from vertices, okay? So by going into the vertex mode, as you can see, I can now manipulate and modify whatever I want with this vertex. We're not gonna use any tools. We're just gonna use movement, translation, and rotation. So I'm gonna grab this guys right here. I'm gonna press a W and I'm gonna move them right there. I'm gonna rotate them. So they're facing that specific direction. Then I'm gonna grab this one right here, W, move them, and I'm gonna rotate them. You can see that we're stressing the topology quite a bit, but as we keep like uh, modifying this and, uh, and moving it, we should be able to, to recover it. So we're gonna select all of them, move them, and as you can see, I'm pretty much tracing the silhouette of the little candle wick right here. There we go. And now that we've uh, successfully like position all of them, you can see that the candle wick looks really nice, right? Not bad. Now, let's say we wanna add those little like borders that we have right there. Could we do it? Of course, if we know the proper tools. So I'm gonna right click, go into the edge mode. And the first thing I'm gonna, I, I wanna like soften up or round off the, the top of the candle wick here. So I'm gonna select this thing. I'm gonna bevel it similar to what we did with the, with the cylinder, give it one segment, but a bigger fraction. I actually want this fraction to be a little bit bigger because I want this to be really, really round. And now to get those lines right there, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna double click this guy again, which selects the whole uh, element. And then I'm gonna double click this with shift to add to my selection. Double click this one as well with shift and double click this one as well with shift. And what that will do, as you can see, is we will generate or we will select all of the edges. And now with all of these edges selected, I'm gonna bevel them. And as you can see, what we get here is a little sort of uh, separation between all of the elements. That's good, it looks good. It's looking a little bit better 
But now if we want to give it even more textures, like really push in those new like roads that we created, we need to go to the third component, which is faces. So I'm gonna right click, go into face mode. I'm gonna select this face and then shift and double click the face right at the side so that we select the whole ring. We can't double click here because it's gonna select everything. So in order to select a face ring, we need to click on one and then shift and double click, select the one at the side. And then we can do the same thing again. So shift, click, shift, double click, shift, click, shift, double click. And that way we select all of the faces on those rings. Now, the next thing I'm gonna show you is one of the most like common tools in any 3D software, which is the extrude tool, which is gonna allow us, as the name implies, to add or remove volume by extruding this specific faces. I'm gonna go here to this tool, which is called the extrude tool, click it, and just push the blue arrow a little bit towards the inside. And as you can see, that's gonna give us a really, really nice texture there for our like uh, candle week. Now, let's take a quick break here to show you one more mode. Remember when I talked about number four and number five, which are the wireframe and shaded modes? Well, there's two more modes that we're gonna talk about here. Number one, which is like normal displayed mode, and number three, which is called smooth mode, okay? So if I press number one and number three, as you can see, we're gonna switch between the different uh, like visualizations of this uh, particular uh, object. We go from a hard, like jaggedy effect to a smooth version. This is pretty much if you've used other softwares like using a smooth uh, like modifier or a subdivision modifier, it's smoothing the elements. But we're gonna get cleaner, more nice, nicer looking shapes by pressing number three. So you can select each object and like apply and unapply this mode. It's not a permanent mode, it's just a preview. And uh, you can enter this preview mode as many times as you want. It's not, again, permanent. So we're happy with this candle week. I'm just gonna say delete history and freeze transformation. And uh, there we go. We got the candle week, we got the top here, we got the sphere. Let's do the eyes real quick. So if we go to the right view, you're gonna see that the eyes are pretty much just like elongated spheres, right? So I'm gonna create a sphere here get it close to the eye, scale it, and then elongate it a little bit more. Just give it the general shape that we would expect, something like that. There we go. Now, of course, on the 3D view, we're gonna push it forward, and we definitely need to rotate around so that it's right there. Probably scale it in so that it's not like super intense, so something like that. And we're gonna move it to the side, push it here, and rotate it so that the like roundness follows most of the circumference of the sphere. There we go. And then in order to mirror this, because we wanna have this thing be mirror, right? We're gonna use a tool called the mirror tool. So let's, again, let's just get this to look as nice as possible following the, the surface of the object, there we go. So the mirror tool is gonna to be found inside of the modeling tab over here on the mesh menu. You select your objects that you want to mirror to the other side. You're gonna go mesh, mirror, option box. Every tool has an option box. And then we just need to tell, hey, we want to mirror this across the X axis, right? Because we have on the, on, the, on the negative X right now, we want it to be on the positive X. So across the world axis, on the, on the world, on the X axis, on the positive side. And we hit apply. And there we go. That way we get the two little eyes for our character. Not bad, right? Now we can of course modify them a little bit as a, as a single unit if we need to, to modify the elements, there we go. And once we're happy with the result, we can freeze transformation, delete history, but see how the pivot point is on one of the eyes instead of both? Well, this is where the third little tool comes into play because with this one, we can center the pivot point on the center of both. So if we need to modify them or like move them around in a, in a more like symmetrical way by having the pivot point on the center of the object, we're gonna be able to generate a, a way, way better result. So that's it. We got the wick, we got the base, we got the bomb, we got the eyes. Now we are going for two of the most complicated elements, which is of course the little um, thing here, the mechanism and the little uh, boots. So uh, I would suggest again, if, if I'm moving a little bit too fast, just pause real quick, because the next couple of things are gonna be a little bit more complicated. And uh, yeah. So for the back mechanism, again, I'm gonna keep it simple. Normally there's ways where we can play with something called topology and stuff to, to make sure that everything looks as nice as possible, but let's keep it simple. Let's just use very, very simple uh, elements and tools so that you guys can follow along. 
So we see this big base right here. That's just another cylinder. So let's add another cylinder. That's going to be right around there. We're going to rotate this. Let's find, let's say 70 degrees. That seems about right. Let's make it a little bit thinner and a little bit longer. And you can see the cap of this thing is round. So we're going to right click, go to this edge, bevel it, add a couple of segments to make it round. And there we go. Now, if we press number three, you can see we get a very nice effect, very nice uh, like a smoothing of the object. Now, for the main mechanism, this sort of like butterfly thing, we need to think about simple shapes. Okay, what simple shape do we have right here that we could mimic? And I'm not going to be modeling this in perspective. I'm actually going to be modeling this in a sort of like straight way here, and then we'll just adapt it and make sure it fits. So I'm going to use a little tool here called the blue pencil just to sketch out. I know that this is sort of like a B shape right has like a straight edge right there and then another b shape right here and we have the holes on the center so if we can create this shape we can adapt it to this side very very easily and if we take a look at this shape we're also going to see that it's pretty much cylindrical right like if we can find the cylinder right there it should be easy to get the rest of the elements so i'm going to create a cylinder here i'm going to move it to the side rotate it so that it's facing us like this 90 degrees I'm going to make it so that it matches the sides, the, the size of the element right there. There we go. Now, from this cylinder on the, on the perspective view, I'm going to grab at this faces right here, the same way we did with the elements. So remember, click, shift, double click to grab all of these faces. Control E to extrude them. That's the shortcut. Or you can click this one right here. And we're just going to push these things forward. Now, if we go to the side view again, we can see how big this element is. It's probably a little bit more. So something like that. There we go. So that's what we want. Now, of course, at this face is here. We don't want them. So goodbye. And we got the initial like half part of or close to the half part of this mechanism right here. I'm going to right click and go to edge component because I definitely want to bridge these things. I'm going to double click this guy, shift and double click this guy. And there's another tool right here, which is called the bridge tool, which will bridge two elements together. If this happens to you, which is relatively common, just go to the bridge offset and move it around until you find the proper, and in my case is number four, the proper uh, connection right there. Cool. So we got the, um, the basic shape, but as you can see, we have this like straight area right here and then another basic shape. Now we know that this shape is mirrored. So if we just do half of it, we're gonna be able to do the other half without having to worry too much about the whole element, right? Well, what I'm gonna do here is as follows. I'm gonna try to find, I think it's this face right here and it goes to like this face right here. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven faces. I'm gonna press control E and then press W to go into movement. And I'm gonna move those faces down. And then with R, I'm gonna scale them so they're perfectly flat. And then again, with W, just move them down a little bit. This is not the cleanest topology, but again, you're just learning. This is perfectly fine and it's gonna work with what we want. So there we go. Now we have half of the little element right here. And what we need to do is we need to mirror this so that we get the other half. I'm gonna go back to face mode and I'm actually gonna delete these faces right here on the bottom, all of this ones. Why? Because when we mirror it and we like combine or, or like paste or glue together both of the elements, we need to make sure that there's no extra faces in between. <laughs> ah, it wouldn't be a tutorial without me sneezing. There we go. So now we're gonna mirror it. And some of you might be like, oh, okay, well, this is simple. We just grab this object. We just go mesh, mirror. And in this case, it's Y. We're in the positive, so we need the negative, and we just hit apply. What happened? Well, it did mirror it, but it's all the way over here. <coughs> ah, it's the all the way over here because remember, we're using the mirror position, and we don't want to use the mirror position. We do want to do Y, and we do want to do negative Y so that it goes down here, but we're not going to be using the world position. We're going to be using this thing called the bounding box, which is going to find the lo lowest limit on the object right now and do the mirror from there. We do want to merge border vertices. We do want to combine it with the original. And I have this custom 0.001 merge threshold. Don't worry. Just follow along in this one. If this is a little bit too confusing, this just means that as long as two vertices are together, they're going to be merged. And I'm just going to hit apply. And there we go. Look at that. We got our little shape right here. So if I press number three, you can see we're going to get a really nice effect. But in order to get an even better effect, I do want to bevel 
the edges. So I'm going to go all around the edges right here on both the inside and the outside of the little mechanism. And we are going to bevel all of those edges, all of the external borders. So we bevel. And I'm going to, on the bevel options that we're going to get here, I'm going to add two segments so that when we smooth, we get this very nice, around, sharp effect. And that's it. So now we can go back to our uh, side view right here and just position this thing so that it matches as close as possible to what we had. Let's center the pivot point. Let's rotate it around. Maybe scale it a little bit there. And there we go. We got our nice little mechanism right there. I actually don't love the angle. Remember the angle that we had? It was supposed to be like 70, roughly close to 70. So something like this, maybe a little bit bigger. And there we go. That looks really, really nice. Oh, it seems like I forgot a little uh, edge right there. This was from my bevel. Um, I'm just going to go back. Let's control C. You have, usually you have enough control C's here instead of Maya. There we go. That one was, that one was the one that I missed. Let's do this again. So bevel, two segments, and there we go. Let's freeze the transformation, center the pivot point, delete history, go to the right view again. And now, if you remember, it was 70. So I'm going to rotate this. Well, in this case, it's like 50 degrees or something. And we're going to get it right there. And that's it. We got our little mechanism right there. I think this looks a little bit big, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to try to line this up perfectly or as perfectly as possible with this thing right there. So I'm using the lines as a sort of guide. There we go. And that's it. We got the little mechanism. Now, if it's too thick or too thin, we can change it around, of course, with scale. I think it was a little bit too thick. And, uh, and we have a very nice looking mechanism there for our bomb. Now, finally, we're going to go to the little boots. And the little boots are a little bit more complex. They're a little bit more organic looking shapes. So we're going to take a look at some tricks here. And this is the final part. Again, I'm trying to teach you to do this and in as little time as possible so you guys can uh, follow along and create your own little bomb. So I'm going to go here to my uh, cube. I'm going to create a cube, actually. Okay, I'm going to create a cube. And then I'm going to go to mesh and I'm going to smooth this cube. This will create this very nice looking round cube and we're going to get the uh, this is going to be look or, or work as the border of our boot. So a smoothed cube is going to be the border of our boot. Then I'm going to grab this bottom vertices right here. I'm going to press R and I'm going to snap them so they're perfectly flat. That's going to be the sole of our boot right there. I'm going to grab this four faces on the back and I'm going to click extrude to extrude this guys and I'm going to press a W and push this guys back to create like that like the heel of the boot which is going to be right around there and if we press number three you can see that we get a very very similar result it's looking quite nice right like a little smooth booth but one thing that we definitely want is I want the little like heel or sole that this guy has so I'm going to grab this faces on the bottom part control E and just push them back a little bit that's going to add another edge. And as you can see, that's going to make it so that the, the border on the bottom part is a little bit more intense. Now, if we want, we can also grab this edges up here, for instance, and we double you, just push them down a little bit more so we can create a, a softer looking effect right there. And that's it. If these are a little bit too intense, same thing. We can just grab them, push them back, push them forward. And it's going to give us this nice looking uh, boot shape right here. I definitely want to make them a little bit wider. I'm going to make it a little bit wider right there. And now the only thing we need to do is we need to create the little cylinder. And the cylinder is nothing more than a sample cylinder right here. So let's go to the right view again. We're going to make a simple cylinder right here, make it a little bit thinner. I am going to bevel the edges on the top and on the bottom very, very slightly. There we go. And that's it. And now we just rotate this around. This is going to be the first boot. Well, I'll show you. Let's do this one first. So it's probably a little bit bigger. Here we can even like play around with some of the vertices and make it a lot closer to the to the original boot. 
a little bit sharper. There we go. Get this right there. And of course, this one. See, on, the, on the left, so it's probably going to be like right around there. I probably need to make the leg a little bit longer so that it actually touches the character. And then I'm going to control D to duplicate this guy. Move it to the right. I'm not going to like perfectly mirror this. I'm just going to guesstimate where these things are supposed to be. This guy, we're going to move it right here. And if we want to give this sort of like walking effect, we can move this up, rotate. And now, as you can see, it's going to look like it's actually like touching the ground. We get this where it's supposed to be, right around there. And there we go. Cool. That's it, guys. If you followed along for the past 35 minutes, you should be able to get to this result right here, which is a very nice looking bomb, just taking a walk and moving forward. Now, hopefully with this, I was able to teach you the basics, but I do want to show you uh, another part of the, of the whole process, which is the rendering stage. And rendering is one of those super important things. I teach them, I, I teach this extensively on the course because not only should you be able to create something like this, it's always good that we can actually render it and create something that looks nice, like a composition that looks nice. So I'm gonna keep going. It's gonna be a little bit longer than 40 minutes. I know that on the thumbnail on the little thing it says 40 minutes, but this is kind of like a like an extra part of the process. And I'm gonna keep it really simple because uh, rendering can become quite, quite, quite complicated. So I'm gonna, again, keep it super, super, super simple. This is what we're gonna do. First, we need to create a ground plane. So I'm gonna create a plane, just make this bigger, and there we go. And uh, if we imagine how the render is gonna look, which is probably what you saw in the thumbnail, which is something like, like this, right? Or probably like this. We need to have some sort of like background. So I'm gonna rotate the ground a little bit, and I'm gonna create something called an infinite background. Um, I'm gonna, I, I'm using this thing right here, which is called resolution gate to frame our stuff. I'm gonna grab this edges right here on the plane and I'm gonna push this up and then this edges, push this up and then this edges and push this up. This is gonna give me a, when I press number three, which remember is our soft mode, uh, this is gonna give us a very nice like soft effect right here. And we're gonna use something called an HDRI. We're gonna we're gonna do this uh, again faster. I wanna I wanna make sure you guys can get a nice result. We go over lighting like way 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 more inside of uh, inside of the premium course, the complete guide to Maya 2023. Make sure to check it out down here. And uh, we have this HDRIs right here. So an HDRI is an image that has light information, and you can use this light information to generate a very nice looking render. So for instance, I'm using Polyhaven here. I'm gonna use this one right here. It's called the distribution board. I'm gonna download this. You can see it's an HDR file. Actually, we need to download the EXR file, not the HDR. So make sure you click here and you are downloading the EXR file. It's this one right here. And if we go to Maya, I'm gonna go up here to Arnold. And I'm gonna say lights, and I'm gonna create something called a sky dome light. This is like a big ambient that's gonna live inside of Maya and where we're gonna be plugging in the image. We're gonna go to the left here to the attribute editor of this sky dome light. And where it says color, I'm gonna click this little note here. I'm gonna select a file. And on this little folder here, I'm gonna select from our downloads, this distribution board, hit open. I know I'm not gonna explain exactly why I'm doing this on this particular video, because otherwise the video would be like two hours long. Uh, but just, just keep in mind that what we're doing here is we're bringing this image so that we can use it to generate a nice render. So by doing that, if I now create a new camera, I'm gonna go to rendering, I'm gonna create a new camera. I can position this camera and move it around so that uh, it frames the object the way I want it. And in this case, I'm gonna say panels, look through selected to look through that specific camera. I'm gonna turn on the resolution gate that we've talked about before, and I'm gonna frame my little bit bomb right here. I'm gonna rotate the, the element here. I'm, I'm framing it here because I wanna add more bit bombs in just a second. So I'm gonna keep this one right here like this. And now, finally, if we go Arnold and hit render, we're gonna get this. Look at this. A very nice preview. Well, sorry, my, my computer is getting a little bit slow. It's a very nice preview of our little character with some nice light bouncing around the scene and, and giving us a really, really nice clean render. We're gonna assign some materials now. And again, I'm, 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 I apologize that I need to, to make this as fast and as, as easy as possible. 
Uh, I'm not going to have the time to explain how all of this happens. I'm just going to show you how you can quickly get a render out and it's going to be up to you to study and get all of the rest of the information. We have a lot of content here on the channel as well or in the live streams. So make sure to give us a like if you want to follow all of this along. So I'm going to go to my render settings up here, which is this little icon, which has a little uh, cogwheel. And if we go to system, first thing, I'm going to change it to GPU. On the common tab on system, I'm going to change the GPU, so it renders with my GPU. And on the common tab, I'm going to change this to full HD right here. Once I do that, if I go back to my render and I render again, it's not going to uh, like have any issues with my recording, and it's going to give us a bigger, cleaner image. There we go. To assign materials, we're going to do the following. You're going to select the object that you want. You're going to right-click, and you're going to assign a new material. And under Arnold, you're going to assign an AI standard surface, which is our basic material for anything. We're going to click it, and we're going to get this output over here. And we can select the color. We can just select, hey, I want this or like dark blue color. And there we go. Now, if we render, the object, as you can see, is going to have that nice dark blue color. If we want this to be rougher, we can change here on the, on the material itself. Anytime you select the object, your material is going to be here on the attribute editor at the very like border. You can increase the roughness, and that is going to increase the roughness of the object. So it's going to be a little bit rougher. If we increase the roughness a lot, it's going to be like a matte effect. And if we bring it really low on the, on the roughness, it's going to be like a glossy surface. So depending on how you want yours to be, you can change the effect. Right now, I have this thing called IPR turn on. So as long as I leave this thing is in play, I can like make modifications and I'm going to see them in real time. If you're struggling with your computer, don't worry. Just pause it, do the render, and then come back. Let's go, for instance, to these two pieces right here. Right click, assign new material. I'm going to assign an Arnold. AI standard surface. I'm going to make this metal and on the color of the metal, I'm going to make this sort of like gold color. So now when we render that thing right there, it's going to be a gold metal color. And again, we can change the roughness if we want this metal to be rougher. If this is a little bit too, too gold, we can bring the, the intensity down a little bit and that looks a little bit better. Uh, this top part is also a metal. So I'm going to assign a new material, Arnold AI standard surface. And this is going to be this sort of like blue steel material, metalness up and a little bit of roughness. And again, when we render, we get that nice little effect right there. The shoes, they're plastic. So we grab the shoes and the legs all at the same time. Right click, assign new material, Arnold, AI standard surface. And we're going to use, we can even sample the orange color. And there we go. That's a little bit more glossy. So as you can see, we get this very nice glossy effect. The eyes are, they're quite flat. Same for the little wick here. So the eyes, I'm going to assign a new material, Arnold, AI standard surface. And I just want a white glossy material. And I'm going to leave the wick as it is right there. There we go. So now the eyes shine a little bit better. And that's it. We got a very cool bomb right there. Now what we can do here, finally, is I'm just going to grab every single thing on my scene. On the, on the character, I'm going to press control G to group it. And I'm going to press control D to duplicate that group and create another one right here. So we can have one right there and let's do another one right here. We're barely going to see it, but it's going to be right there. You can select the group here on the outliner to, to move it around. And there we go. So now not only do we have a little render, we're actually telling a story. And this is one of the powerful things about the 3D world is that with very simple things, you too can tell a story and uh, connect with your audience in, in ways that you might not have, have imagined. We're going to push them all forward a little bit more. There we go. So we can see the, the composition a little bit better. And uh, I'm going to use a little bit of like negative space here. So for instance, this one, I'm going to push it back so that we are not like kicking the other guy. And then this one's also going to go back a little bit right there. I'm also going to move my camera a little bit so that we can actually see the other guys. Might even like zoom out a little bit and everything. Like we can do whatever we need to do to modify our composition. And once we jump back into render and we render, we're going to get a very, very nice render right here. Oh, you know what? I forgot to select a piece. I have to go back <laughs> all the way back. So this piece right here, I forgot to add it. Middle mouse and drag it to the group. And now it's inside of the group. There we go. So let's push this one right here. Let's duplicate the group, push it back. 
duplicate the group and push it back. Let's push the floor back a little bit so we're not like creating anything weird. There we go. And we can play around with a lot of things such as like the camera focal length and things like that. But there we go. With this, we now have a very nice like marching line of, uh, of the bombs. Kind of want to go for a little bit more of an epic shot here. There we go. That looks a little bit better. I think I'm going to go in a little bit more. That looks good. Uh, maybe a little bit too much. I want to see the separation between all of them properly. There we go. So, yeah, here's where you can play around with all of the different positions for your for your characters, and you're going to be able to get something that looks really, really nice. Finally, I'm going to go here to the little uh, cogwheel. I'm going to add an imager. I'm going to add a denoiser optics, which is going to clean the image, and it's going to remove all the noise, as you can see right here. And you can just go File, Save your image, then export this image so that you too can use it for your little uh, portfolio that you're going to start building now with uh, with this one. And, uh, and that's it, guys. So if you managed to get all the way to this final part of the video, thank you very much for, for following along. Hopefully you like this format. It's a small, simple video to get you guys to know the software, understand how it works and how we can produce really cool looking effects. And uh, yeah, if you like it, make sure to check the Udemy courses that we have down here. At the time of this recording, this is the last day, March 24, to get 90% discount. But they're always, we're always offering like new ways for you to engage with our content. So make sure to hit the little links down here. Also, a like, a share, a subscription, it always helps for our channel. Thank you very much for being part of this class, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.